Have you ever pondered about the difference between Stobar and Katabar aircraft carriers? Aircraft carriers, they're the behemoths of the sea, floating fortresses that serve as mobile airbases. These naval giants are critical elements in a nation's military strategy, providing unmatched power projection capabilities. They're like floating cities, hosting a crew of thousands and an air wing of fighter jets, helicopters, and surveillance aircraft. But did you know, not all aircraft carriers are created equal? Yes, there are different types of these naval leviathans, each with their own unique characteristics, capabilities, and operational doctrines. For this discussion, we're going to focus on two specific types, STOBAR and CATABAR. These are acronyms, standing for Short Takeoff, but Arrested Recovery and Catapult Assisted Takeoff, but Arrested Recovery, respectively. Both STOBAR and CATABAR have unique features that set them apart. Let's dive deeper into each one. To kick things off, we'll start with STOBAR, which stands for Short Takeoff but Arrested Recovery. This aircraft carrier concept is a fascinating blend of simplicity and efficiency. STOBAR is a system used for the launch and recovery of aircraft from the deck of an aircraft carrier, where aircraft launch under their own power and land using arrestor wires. The idea is straightforward but the execution is anything but. Let's dive in a little deeper. The aircraft in a STOBAR system take off using a ski jump design at the deck's end. This design eliminates the need for complex and costly catapult systems. Once airborne, the aircraft gain additional lift from the upward vector provided by the ski jump. Now when it's time for these birds to return to the nest, they land using arrestor wires that rapidly decelerate the aircraft. The countries that prominently use STOBAR include Russia, China, and India. They've found value in STOBAR's simpler design and lower operating costs. It's a system that's more forgiving on the budget, and in the world of military spending, that's a major plus. But as with all things, STOBAR does have its limitations. The most significant is the lower aircraft weight capacity. Because the aircraft must take off under their own power, there's a limit to how heavy they can be. This means fewer weapons, less fuel, and ultimately, a reduced operational range. Furthermore, the launch rate of aircraft is slower compared to other systems. In a high-intensity conflict, this could potentially be a critical drawback. So, Stobar carriers, while cost-effective and relatively simple, are inherently limited by the weight of the aircraft they can launch and the speed at which they can do so. It's a trade-off, a balance between cost and capability. While Stobar carriers have their perks, they are not without their downsides. Now let's turn our attention to Catabar. Catabar, or catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, is another popular type of aircraft carrier. This system is quite sophisticated involving a powerful catapult to propel aircraft into the sky and an arresting gear to help them land safely on the carrier's deck. The Catabar system is favored by some of the world's strongest militaries including the United States and France. Now let's delve into the nuts and bolts of Catabar. The catapult used in this system is typically steam or electromagnetic powered. This catapult is capable of hurling a 70,000-pound aircraft from 0 to 165 miles per hour in just about 2 seconds. That's some serious horsepower. The arresting gear on the other hand, is a mechanical system designed to rapidly decelerate an aircraft as it lands. This allows for safe and efficient landings on the relatively short runway of an aircraft carrier. Catabar has some significant advantages over other carrier systems. Firstly, it allows for a higher launch rate. More planes can take off in a shorter amount of time which is crucial in high-pressure situations. Secondly, Catabar carriers can handle larger and heavier aircraft including those designed for electronic warfare and airborne early warning. This gives the Catabar system an edge in terms of versatility and operational capability. However, it's not all roses with Catabar. This system is notably more expensive and complex to build and operate than others like Stobar. The technology and expertise required for a Catabar carrier are substantial, leading to higher costs in terms of both construction and maintenance. Moreover, the system's complexity also means that it requires more training for pilots and deck crews, adding another layer of expense and logistical challenge. Catabar carriers, despite their complexity and cost, offer significant operational advantages. Now that we've covered both types, let's summarize our findings. Now that we've explored both Stobar and Catabar, it's time to put them head to head. On one hand, Short Takeoff but Arrested Recovery, or Stobar, is a simpler system that requires less technical complexity and therefore less cost. It's a viable choice for nations with limited budgets yet still desire a formidable naval presence. 
However, its limitations are in its aircraft's payload and fuel capacity, which impacts range and combat effectiveness. On the other hand, Catapult Assisted Takeoff but Arrested Recovery or Catabar boasts greater flexibility and power. It can launch heavier aircraft with full payload and fuel, making it a superior choice for long-range high-intensity operations. Yet, its technical complexity and cost can be prohibitive for some nations. Each system has its merits and each its drawbacks. Whether a nation chooses Stobar or Catabar often reflects its operational needs, financial resources, and strategic goals. In the end, the choice between Stobar and Catabar boils down to a nation's operational needs, budget, and strategic objectives. There's no doubt that Stobar and Catabar carriers each have their place in modern naval warfare. Stobar, or short takeoff but arrested recovery, is a system that's cost-effective, requiring less complex technology and fewer crew members to operate. It's an excellent fit for nations with limited resources or smaller naval fleets. However, its limited aircraft compatibility and slower operational tempo are points to consider. On the other hand, Catabar, or Catapult, Assisted Takeoff Barrier Arrested Recovery, is a system that accommodates a wider range of aircraft and ensures a faster operational tempo. This makes it a preferred choice for nations with extensive naval resources and larger fleets. But it comes with its own set of challenges including higher costs and the need for more advanced technology and a larger crew. In essence, the choice between Stobar and Catabar boils down to a balance of resources, operational needs, and strategic objectives. So, the next time you see an aircraft carrier in action, you'll know whether it's a Stobar or Catabar, and understand the strategy behind its use. Thanks for watching.